All right, folks, uh, good afternoon, good morning, good evening. I guess it depends on where you're joining us on this uh, big blue marble. Welcome aboard. Uh, I love this time of the quarter. Uh, it is time for full throttle. This is uh, once a quarter. Sometimes we do it a little less than that, just depending on uh, what's going on in the markets. We open up the doors to our uh, training our trading squadron so you guys can come in and kick the tires and check out what we do uh, here at Top Gun Options. So I love this. Welcome aboard. We're going to have a great time in the next uh, three days. Yeah, two and a half, three days. All right, so let's get airborne. Uh, welcome aboard brief. What am I going to cover tonight? I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. Uh, I know five or six of our strategic partners uh, sent out uh, emails uh, letting you all know about Full Throttle. So welcome aboard to all the new folks who don't even know who the hell I am. Uh, you will by the end of the brief. Uh, so I'll give you a little bit of a background uh, on myself. And obviously, uh, Topkin Options will briefly cover the flight schedule for the rest of the week, how our portfolios uh, looking year to date, last year, all that good stuff. What the hell's an option? Some of you might be sitting here uh, asking that question. Uh, so I'll answer it briefly and then uh, we'll be able to get into that a little bit more. Our trading and training methodology. Okay, it's not rocket surgery, folks. This is not difficult at all. Investing, trading uh, is actually pretty easy and it's pretty fun. Uh, wait, it's easy if you know what you're doing. Uh, what was that John Wayne movie? Uh, the Sands of Iwo Jima, right? I think it's Sergeant Striker. Life's tough. It's even tougher if you're stupid. So, and if you notice, training is in italics. Why is it uh, italicized? Because we do not do financial education. The world is full of educated uh, derelicts, right? Financial education is awful. Uh, I'm going to train you. Fighter pilots are trained. Doctors are trained. Uh, plumbers are trained. Uh, training gives you a skill. Education makes you look like a college professor, or one of the folks uh, running around campuses. Um, so uh, we'll talk about uh, that, and then we'll wrap up uh, with our proprietary trade plan, seven-step trade plan, folks. Uh, trading is a form of combat when you think about it, uh, and aviation is very close to trading because we use checklists, man. It takes the emotion out, right? 90% of trading is emotional, folks, and 10% is uh, just kind of knowing what you're doing. The 90% is emotional. So I'm actually going to wrap up with some uh, emotional uh, stuff. And uh, I, if you stick around, you're going to be, uh, I, I laugh at me, so you can laugh at me as well. So we're sitting here in our welcome aboard brief tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. We're going to do the primary live trade brief. That's every Tuesday at 10 a.m. Uh, we take a look at uh, what's going on around the world with our strategic and operational brief. And then we get tactical uh, and we trade. That's about an hour, sometimes an hour and a half uh, brief on Tuesday morning. So tomorrow morning, we'll see you there. Don't worry about Wiz, I'm working tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. You're going to get access to all the replays, and I'll show you the replay page in a couple minutes here. Wednesday at high noon, we're going to do uh, our accelerated retirement brief. The accelerated retirement portfolio is is that name is, in fact, what it is. Uh, it's a little bit more conservative portfolio, longer dated trades, uh, all the way out in options land. We can fly out into the future out to, I think, June of 2023 right now and get bullish or bearish. So this uh, portfolio is uh, you know, a little bit more conservative. Uh, and I I'm very proud to say last year in 2020, it was our best performing portfolio. It made like 960 thousand dollars last year last year was insane we had an absolute blast i'm going to open up the doors wednesday afternoon don't sell anything folks i, I no offense to any of you if you've done this uh, well a lot of people end up at top gun options right they they like financial nomads they go to this webinar and they sign up for this service and they end up here and they're like where you been all my life um so <laughs> we'll open the doors to uh to 50 slots uh on a wednesday don't sell anything before, but for the financial nomads, I, I just don't understand how people can go to like a a 30 minute, you know, multi-speaker presentation and 30 or 45 minutes after the dude or the lady goes through 92 slides, you, you like, you sign up for something. We don't, I'm one of the only guys in the industry that actually opens the, the hangar doors so you can come in and see normal flight operations. So you're going to be in these live trade briefs with our regular, our current members. It's the best way to do it, man. Uh, demo do, demonstrate, and then do. And then uh, we'll we'll stop Wednesday night at 8 p.m. I'm going to give you a sample of what you're going to get with full throttle training. Once you become a member, 
eight sessions. We do them once a quarter, eight sessions, like on a Tuesday and Thursday night, glass of wine, seven, usually start at seven, go about an hour, hour and a half, and nobody leaves uh, the full throttle training with a question mark over their head. I'll sit here until midnight uh, with a bottle of wine and, uh, and answer your question. So I'll give you a sample of what that training looks like Wednesday night. Once we get 50 and knock on wood. We've never not gotten 50. We always seem to be uh, throttling folks. And, and, and that's, that's a no kidding. Topkin options, small, tight knit squadron. We don't, I don't want, you know, I think we had over 1500 people register at least for these things. There's no way in hell. I mean, looking in the attendee box right now, it gives me agita with, with too many people because the quality of the training suffers. Uh, so, 50 and that's it. We close the doors and we'll get airborne uh, uh, with or without you. And maybe if you don't get a slot this time around, maybe if we do one next quarter, you can get on board. Quick administrative items. You're in GoToWebinar right now. Uh, you have a little camera function. So on the window you're viewing me in, there's a little camera function up at the top. When you click that, uh, it'll take a shot of the screen. So, and I see it saves it right to your desktop. So I recommend you, you know, got a pen and paper, take some notes, but you can always just click that camera and uh, you're good to go. Chat, uh, I can see when you ask me, uh, ask me a question and stuff like that, I can see it. Uh, if it's going to break up my flow, I'll probably save it to the end. If it's something good, I'll, I'll, I'll take care of it right there. But you can't see each other's chat because it turns into a zoo. Um, okay. Uh, notes talked about. Pen, paper, good to go. And make sure you bookmark this page. Let's go take a look at where all the replays are going to be posted. Uh, it is right here. Go.topkinoptions.com slash FT replay. So I'm going to put this link down in the chat box over here. You'll see it in, right now. Click on that and book, bookmark it. Now, let's do a little bit of a victory lap. Um, you're going to see some previous webinars on this page. I'm keeping these up here until I'm cold in the ground. Why? You're gonna find out in a couple minutes, but let's just say um, this is from 2020. Look at the headlines. 3 February, warning, the markets are set to implode. Hmm, February 4th, dead bat bounce. If you've ever heard the term dead cat bounce in Wall Street, it's like when something implodes and no offense to any animal lovers, I get two dogs. Dead cats really don't bounce. So a dead cat bounce is a little bit of a bounce. So as the market imploded and went up a little bit, I called it a dead bat bounce because I knew that China and the virus uh, came from a bat. Uh, and then look at this, folks. In, in our accelerated retirement brief, get long volatility, buy some volatility calls, grab the popcorn and your mask. Look at this, man. Bearish trade on China. We absolutely destroyed it. I keep these up here. Uh, if you want to, you can go watch them. I was the only financial professional on the face of the planet to nail it to the day, the COVID market crash. By the way, that's the name of the book that's coming out that I wrote uh, that's going through editing right now, man. Absolute nailed it. We turned... I forget how many folks at Topkin Options members became millionaires. We're talking little old lady in tennis shoes, stay-at-home moms, dads. We we destroyed it last year. I had an absolute blast. All right, so there's the replay page. Real quick, how'd you do last week if you are an investor in trade? Actually, you know what? Let me ask a question so we can uh, – let me launch a poll here because I want to see who I'm talking to. What is your level – let me launch that fire. What's your level of options knowledge right now? Because I this will this will kind of color – how the rest uh, of the uh, how the days goes. For all my Marines out there who can't spell the word options, so what's an option? Familiar, trade calls and puts, I know how to do spreads, or I'm a Jedi master. So take a couple seconds and, and answer that so I can figure out what uh, who I'm talking to. The replay page, the link is in the chat box, whoever just asked for it. It's go.topgunoptions.com slash FT replay. That stands for full throttle replay. Okay. A couple more seconds. What's an option? Um, familiar. Um, and uh, Jedi Master calls and puts. Okay. Half of you voted. I don't know what the other half of you are doing. Let's get on board here. All right. Ooh. All right. 
couple more seconds. All right, let me close that. I'm going to share it with you so you know who uh, you're going through uh, your uh, potential new member, new squadron mates. There you go. So uh, what's an option in familiar? Uh, spreads? Good. All right, so we, we have a good smattering, and we have a couple Jedi Masters in here, which is fantastic. Um, that is good to know. Let me close this, and we will get airborne. So how'd you make out last week? Look at this, man. We had this massive bounce off the 50-day moving average. This is the S&P 500, and then what happened? We kind of went level for two weeks, and then bang. Last week was a bloodbath, wasn't it? Another, I called it Tech Wreck 5.0. It seems like we've had a Tech Wreck every month this uh, week, uh, this week, this year. So there you go, implosion and bounce. How'd you do last week? Ah, okay, good. How about how'd we do last week? $164,000 last week. Those are all the trades I placed live in my real brokerage accounts with my money. Uh, 100, if you allow me to round up, it was 163,739. Crushed it. Even though I trade a little bit of a larger portfolio, drop a drop a digit, folks. <laughs> Would you have liked to made 16 grand last in a week? We had an absolute blast last week. So, as options traders, we love volatility. We love I love movement up, down, sideways. Now, as an American, I'd love for markets to go up because I don't like when markets implode and margin calls and people freak out. I just don't like down markets. As an American, as Gordon Gecko, I love down markets and markets imploding. The COVID crash was one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life, which is kind of weird to say. Anyway, so uh, we had an awesome week. Um, as I said, 2020 was the best year of trading in my life. Why? There we go. On January 22nd of 2020, we were in an accelerated retirement brief, sitting here in this chair, staring into this camera. Donald Trump was in Davos, Switzerland. You remember this? All the beautiful people. This is where Ray Dalio, Bridgewater Asset, like the largest hedge fund manager in the world. You remember what he said in Davos? Cash is trash. If you're in cash right now, you're an idiot. Donald Trump, in an interview with Joe Kiernan, I sat here, watched it right there on my big screen. It was like a throwout question. Like the last question Joe asked was like, so Mr. President, what, what's this? this China virus thing, what's going on? You could see Trump, it, it, he was like, he was livid. He's like, why are you asking me about this? I trust Xi, good buddy of mine, good backswing, not coming here. What, what, what a stupid question. It, it done, what do you, come on now. I looked into this camera and said, he's lying. This phone right here, folks, is, is priceless. I got buddies in the Pentagon. I got buddies who was at the time in the White House. Hedge fund, but that my network is ginormous. I knew what the intelligence was that he was getting. Matter of fact, who also knew the intelligence he was getting? A bunch of senators and congressmen who uh, went out to microphones and said everything's great and then personally sold all of their stuff and told people to get out. I did this right here, folks. January 22nd, we imploded. Bounced off the 50, and then what is the dates after that? February, right? I just showed you the replays. We were doing a full throttle right here, and you saw what I said. Get long volatility, buy puts on the S&P 500. And then what happened on the way down, guys? All the smart money. Oh, this is the bottom. No. Oh, I, this is, I'd buy the dip here. This is definitely the bottom. I'd be a nibbler. I'm nibbling all the way down. The smart money got it wrong. Every time they said buy the dip, I said sell it. We nailed it. Misery loves company. Remember, folks, the term hedge fund is actually kind of a lie. When I was at a trading firm up in Chicago, we did some research. At that time, uh, of the 10,000 hedge funds in the United States, 9,500 of them didn't hedge or don't even know what the hell uh, puts are or options are. So misery loves company. All the most of these hedge funds, folks, are buy and hold. They're long only, meaning the whole way down. First of all, they would have been out of money if they nibbled every time. I remember Trump sending out a tweet. 
market's looking great here, I'd be a buyer, whatever it was. He deleted it a couple of days later because the Dow went down 3,000 points. I have a screenshot of it. So, and we timed the rebound here perfectly. I thought, I got this wrong. I thought we were gonna W, bounce and then back down again. I got it wrong, why? Because it was a Thursday morning. It was that Thursday morning weekly jobs number where it was six million Americans uh, who had filed. I was sitting here getting ready to push enter and get even more bearish, believing we were gonna do the W. And what happened? Breaking news, Jerome Powell, the Federal Reserve Chairman, just dropped the biggest financial nuke into the market. What did Wiz do? Bullish. In the blink of an eye, we got bullish and the market never looked back. Now, do you remember what happened as the market climbed and never looked back? All the idiots, all the smart money who did this wrong, got this wrong. Jeffrey Gunlock, last April in 2020, said, all right, I'm, I'm out of cash. I'm like, good, time for you to get bullish. He's like, no, I'm getting bearish. The guy runs Double Line Capital, a $150 billion fund, got short the market in April. So folks, we're the smart money, not them, trust me. So I just had an app, we had a blast here. So the smart money, folks, is not that smart. Predicted the big one, the Fred Sanford. And uh, even if folks didn't trade here at Topkin Options, I remember doing some full throttles. I got an email from a lady who's like, you saved my, you saved, I think she said $400,000 uh, in my 401k. We would have been destroyed. And she wasn't even a TGO member. She was in the full throttle and got this stuff for free. It was a very nice email. We actually, in March of last year, we made $2.1 million dollars in a month. These are based on $100,000 model portfolios too, folks. And out of the 100 grand, I wasn't even used, we were, at any given time, I only have about 40 to, to 50% uh, invested there. Absolute insanity. Okay, uh, so let's get airborne. No distractions. Silence that electro, uh, electronic nicotine. Here's my promise to you by the end of, uh, by Wednesday night, you're gonna have an absolute up-to-date intelligence brief. Every live trade brief begins with our intelligence brief, folks. Trading is combat, you need to gather your intelligence. I'm gonna do it for you, but I'm gonna teach you how to fish, right? Um, it, this is a really bad business model. My marketing folks hate when I say this, but it's honesty and it's the truth. I don't want you here forever. Folks, you don't go to Top Gun, the real Top Gun, and stay there. You go, you go through the course, which is hard. And if you're lucky enough to graduate, you put a Top Gun patch on your shoulder and you go back to the fleet. You go back to your squadron and say, hey man, I just came from the mountain in my flowing robes. Here's all the latest knowledge and intel and tactics. Same thing at Top Gun Options. My metric of success is to get an email from you or to support that says, hey man, I got this. I know what I'm doing now because I know once you go back to the fleet, you tell people. Most of the, the, our, our members come from other uh, people. So I'm gonna give you an up-to-date intelligence brief, train you how to employ options, show you what we're targeting for max profit and how to turn panic into profit. I made a career call, what was it, like three, nailed the COVID crash, nailed President Trump's election and his defeat. Um, in the next year to two years, we will have a massive, 20% correction minimum in the market, and we will enter a recession. I guarantee it. And we're going to print money when that happens. I'm not going to be happy about it. Well, no, I'll be happy about the making money part, but not the recession because it's just painful. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Matthew Buckley. My call sign is Wiz. Last time I checked with my parents, uh, they loved me and didn't name me Wiz. I earned uh, that call sign flying the F-18 Hornet for the United States Navy for about 15 years. Graduated from the Navy Fighter Weapons School, which many of you know is Top Gun, uh, and also flew some combat sorties uh, over Iraq. I was an adversary pilot. So I was in the movie uh, Top Gun, I was the bad guy, right? I flew around in uh, Hornets that were painted like enemy MiGs. I flew bad guy tactics against our good guys and gals. So they were prepared to go overseas. Got to be honest with you, flying over Iraq was kind of a letdown. We, we are harder on ourselves in training than any potential adversary could ever be. So we're ready to go, right? So had an absolute past. 
background, I grew up in uh, South Jersey. I'm one of six uh, Irish Catholic uh, kids. Uh, my upper four brother and my brother and my three older sisters were born in South Philadelphia. And then my mom and dad moved down to uh, the Jersey Shore, the nice one, not the TV one. Uh, and my little sister and I were born in South Jersey. So I'm kind of a South Jersey, South Philly kid. Was always raised uh, service above South. Uh, grew up on the beach in Margate, New Jersey, and uh, always wanted to fly. So kind of like a Reese's Peanut Butter Cup. Wanted to be a Navy fighter pilot since my youngest uh, memory. But sitting there eating my, my Cheerios every morning, my dad would be sitting there with the paper in my face. And on the back page, I'd see all those hieroglyphics. And my dad explained that those were stocks. And, you know, if you went and bought a Happy Meal today and you own stock in the McDonald's, maybe it would go up. I was always fascinated and always interested uh, in finance. Now, you don't get rich by joining the Navy, folks. I mean, if first of all, if you're trying to serve your country and get rich, unlike Nancy Pelosi and some other folks, um, you're doing it for the uh, the wrong reason. Bruce, why is your call sign whiz? Um, let's just say that call signs aren't uh, endearing terms. Uh, you usually earn your call sign, and it's usually by doing something stupid. So I'm whiz, and I'll uh, maybe if you become a member and we uh, throw a couple beers back, I'll, I'll give you the, the whiz story. Not too many people know it. So that's that's a, that's a uh, good membership uh, advantage. All right. So when I was a young junior officer in the Navy, I graduated from Jacksonville University up in Florida, went through NROTC, was lucky enough to fog a mirror one day, and I slipped into uh, Navy flight training. Um, and... Uh, as I was doing my Navy flight training, I, I was, uh, I remember my first investment was like a 25 or $50 check as an ensign. That was a lot of money. And I wrote a uh, $50, $100, you know, whatever it was to the USA Aggr Aggressive Growth Fund. And then the girlfriend at the time was, uh, I think, kept Ann Taylor in business. Is Ann Taylor still in business? Ann Taylor in business. And I paid the American Express bill. So I'm like, why am I paying a mutual fund? a bunch of fees to pick stocks when I can kind of pick stocks. Short story long, I started applying everything I was learning as a fighter pilot, having a strategy, implementing tactics that support a strategy, uh, contingency planning, knowing when to get out of a good or bad situation before it got worse, uh, managing risk. Now, you're probably sitting there looking at that picture going, yeah, okay, this guy's going to talk to me about managing risk. He flew off of aircraft carriers at night in the middle of the Pacific in bad weather. I did. So that's why we want to minimize and eliminate all known risks. As an options uh, trader, as a fighter pilot, that's what you want to do. Plan on everything going wrong, and when it doesn't, you're pleasantly surprised, right? So applied it to my trading with absolute incredible uh, results. Um, but real quick. How did Top Gun Options come about? Well, unfortunately, uh, it's the result of a tragedy. Uh, I left active duty in 2000, out the door to go be a rich airline pilot. But I also got hired uh, to fly F-18s in the Naval Reserve, man, out of Naval Air Station, Fort Worth, Texas. That was, I, I hit the lottery. Airline pilot, fighter pilot on the weekend. I owned the world. Uh, on the morning of September 11th, 2001, I was scheduled uh, for my first flight as a pilot for American Airlines. Uh, wife came into the bedroom as I was packing and said, hey, you better check out the TV. You know, a, a plane hit the World Trade Center. I'm like, whatever. Bad weather, small airplane. She's like, uh, no. Went out into the living room. Beautiful day in New York City. Massive hole, smoking hole. As I'm going through my mental aviation checklist of how this could have happened, second plane hit. Jumped into my old 89 Porsche in my flight suit, pushed the American Airlines. It's in my closet. It, it's, it's still in its plastic. It serves as a reminder. I remember sliding my American Airlines uniform over in the plastic, throwing on my Navy flight suit, and I did about 150 miles an hour out to Naval Air Station, Fort Worth, where I got out there just as they closed it and went to a combat posture. Me and another buddy made it out to the squadron, Gruff. We called down to maintenance control, said, Chief, how many jets do we have? He said, four. I said, get them fueled, get them armed. Uh, we got a phone call from the F-16 guys next door, uh, the SPADs. 
uh, which were an Air Force Reserve Squadron, they were tied into NORAD, the North American Air Defense. They said, Wiz, get over here. You and Gruff, get over here. Four of us made it out here. We're arming our jets as well. Let's brief. Went over to the SPADs, uh, and we're in the in the command post coming up with how we're going to get airborne, do an alert. Uh, and as we were briefing, the Pentagon got hit. It was just, it was, it was surreal. Um, so I went from potentially flying in an airliner that day to shooting one down, uh, to maybe even shooting down a squadron mate. Uh, I, out of the 18 guys in my reserve squadron, almost everybody was airborne that day in an airline. Imagine being ordered to shoot down an airliner full of you, let alone one flown by your best friend. It was just, it was absolutely surreal. A couple of days later, I actually made national news when I forced a small airplane to land uh, that was flying, that got airborne when the airspace was closed. Remember every day they're like, oh, we're trying to open it. Well, th this old guy thought it was open and he was flying near a prohibited airspace. Uh, there was an airborne White House down over Crawford. Uh, so, well, guess what happened in the blink of an eye? Uh, I got a, when I got hired at American airlines, I had, a, I got a color, you know, a letter color stationery signed in ink by the chief pilot, uh, a week after the attacks, I got a photocopied letter that was like off center too, because they did thousands of them saying I was furloughed. Furloughed is a polite airline term for you're laid off. So in the blink of an eye, lost everything, the healthcare, rich airline pilot job, uh, we had just left the Navy, so what little savings we had, we used for a down payment on a house, man. I was scrambling, but I kind of smacked myself in the face a little bit because I'm like, dude, 3,000 people dead, families destroyed, get over yourself, get airborne and and fix this. So time to get serious. Uh, I said, you know, I, I need to apply myself, man. I need to pay the mortgage and we need to live. Uh, so I applied myself even harder into my trading and eventually... I was so successful that I popped up on the radar of one of the largest equity options trading firms in the world, headquartered right here uh, in the beautiful uh, Chicago Board of Trade. Everybody should recognize this. That's the intersection of Jackson and LaSalle. Uh, and that's that right there was our, my trading firm, man, right here. Beautiful uh, uh, trading floor, fourth and fifth floor of the CBOT, right down the floor from the, uh, from the pits. When I was uh, at this firm, I helped build a uh, retail brokerage options house. I helped build a hedge fund when I was there. Um, and I, I, I laughingly tell people I, I was, I am, I'm Valentine from trading places, man. Two, you know, rich white people uh, betting a, a dollar on me. I was the managing director of strategy uh, for this firm. Uh, and then in my spare time, I started the options news network, ONN TV. Uh, I know John and Pete Najarian from uh, my time in Chicago, and CNBC allows them to pay lip service to options every once in a while, but we were dedicated 24-7 uh, options. It was great. We shot on the floor of the CBO and the CBOT. I hosted three or four of the shows. It, I just had a blast. We gave retail folks like you a behind-the-scenes look at what's going on in the options market, unusual activity. Heard this from this guy. One of my favorite shows was the options cocktail. Every Friday after the markets closed, we picked a different trader bar around the CBOT, turned the camera on, got a bunch of traders liquored up, and you really heard what was going on in the market. So I had a, it was just, it was so much fun. So anyway, no offense to anybody from Chicago, you can keep it. Nine months out of the year, it's pure misery. I'm a beach guy, Lake Michigan don't count. Uh, and I'm a you know Navy beach guy. So <laughs> moved down to uh, God's waiting room down here, Boca Raton in 2010. So started Topkin Options uh, to put the ladder down. That's a military term we use. When you make, I, I didn't like the Wall Street thing, folks, to be honest with you. A lot of those guys would push their own mother uh, in front of a bus to make a dollar. I just didn't, it, 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 the people, some people, I guess, uh, are definitely a pull the ladder up type of approach. Hey, man, I made partner. I got a huge bonus. Got mine. Not in the military, man. You put the ladder down. So Topkin Options, I'm putting the ladder down. I've been both pro am. So 11 years, we've trained over 10,000 investors of all skill sets. If you're sitting here going, I don't even know what an option is. Welcome home. Uh, we also uh, last year, I started two investment clubs because people were like, how are you doing this? 
as my portfolio is getting destroyed, you guys are making over $2 million. I'm like, why don't we start our own club? We can talk about those some other time because it's outside of kind of uh, what we're doing here. Also do some charity work down here in South Florida on the Broward Sheriff's Office Advisory Council. Uh, I unfortunately uh, lost a sister to a drunk driver when she was a freshman in college at Villanova. Um, so I work with MAD. Uh, but here's my crowning achievement. Last year, as we were printing money, uh, I decided to really put the ladder down. I started uh, a foundation called the Top Gun uh, Fighter Foundation. Uh, in the hour that we're talking to you, a veteran will take his or her life. On average, one veteran per hour kills themselves. It's a national tragedy. I can see people are... Once I tell people that statistic, they're stunned. 60,000 homeless vets in this country. Matter of fact, this week, later this week, Thursday through Tuesday, I'm flying to San Diego and down to Mexico to go um, check out how Navy SEALs, Special Forces operators uh, are dealing and, and doing out of VA, VA type of treatment to deal with operator syndrome, traumatic brain injury, PTSD, anxiety. It's a disgrace. I lost uh, one of my groomsmen, Eric Swenson, Swede, Beautiful wife, four kids, put a bullet in his head a couple of years ago. Another, I, I, it's awful. So I, I'm putting down the ladder to raise awareness, and we're, we support other foundations that uh, that are helping as well. And I have a nice announcement to make. So the Top Gun Fighter Foundation two weeks ago bought its own fighter jet, an L-39 Albatross. So one of the benefits of maybe being a Top Gun Options member is you might get to fly in a fighter jet. So tonight, this is breaking news. It's a good-looking jet. The paint job's awesome, but check out – we're actually buying two jets. Keep that under your hat, but we're, I'm getting another one that's in Houston. Check out – here's the world announcement. Check out the paint scheme. I just got this back from the graphic designer the other day. Here are the Top Gun Fighter Foundation jets. Foundation 1. And Foundation 2. So, uh, yep, they're based down here in uh, South Florida. Thank you, Mike. I appreciate that. It, uh, it's just, it's it's heartbreaking. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, the world premiere. Uh, I actually have to get my type rating next week. I got to go, uh, I got to fly with an FAA check guy, and then I am fully good to go, man. Um, so there you go. There are the Top Gun Fighter Foundation uh, fighter aircraft. Going to do the air show circuit. Um, to uh, raise awareness, man, uh, and uh, and take some veterans flying. Put a, it's really interesting because in a fighter squadron, we might have 200, 250 Marines and sailors. Maybe one sailor, like the sailor of the year or the Marine of the year, would get you know to ride in the backseat of a jet. So there are tons of veterans out there that I would love to just thank for their service and maybe put a f smile on their face. So there you go. Uh, Top Gun Foundation one and two, and uh, and I and just got the helmets back too. So uh, if you get a chance to uh, fly with us uh, or with me, you're going to, uh, you know, uh, those are L thirty nines, L thirty nines, L thirty nine Albatross. It's a Ch uh, Czechoslovakian uh, light attack fighter jet, and they stood. There's about six or seven countries that use this as a frontline attack aircraft. Syria, matter of fact, if you Google this airplane, you can see one getting shot down over Syria. Well, that's not pleasant to talk about. Um, but yeah, L-39, single engine, two-seat fighter jet. Uh, if you support the foundation, maybe we can throw you in the back seat someday. But yeah, and then those are the helmets. All right, let's get airborne. Um, now with all the foundation work, in these live trade briefs, and as a full throttle member, I'm going to tell you how I feel, folks, as an American. I talk a lot of politics because politics drives the markets. It's funny when some people are like, ah, why are you talking about all this politics? Uh, what? Six trillion dollars in new spending, interest rates, inflation, war in the Middle East. It's all politics. So I'm going to tell you how I feel as an American, and then I'm going to get out of that flight suit and put on my $10,000 Armani and be Gordon Gecko. Okay, I'm going to show you how to potentially print money. It might not be palatable all the time. I remember getting bullish on China. I'm like, you got to be bullish on a country that does whatever the hell they want, and they're pounding us into the dirt. So I call it, uh, you know, I, I'm kind of, um, you know, bipolar. Tell you how it feels American, and then here's what we're going to do, how we're going to make money. All right, real quick. 
What are call options? So this is going to be options 101 in about two minutes. What's an option? You've been dealing with options your entire life. You maybe just didn't call them that. Here's a home in Aspen that I wish I had bought at the beginning of the COVID. Here's a funny story. So as the market started crashing with COVID, uh, I picked up the phone. As we're printing money, I picked up the phone. I called a realtor in Aspen. I'm like, you see this house? Yeah, what is it? The three million, whatever it was. I'm like, call me when it's a uh, hundred thousand. We're all gonna die, but I want this house. She's like, oh my God, do you think the market's gonna implode due to COVID? I'm like, duh. She called me back eventually. Uh, the place is $6 million now. Everybody fled San Francisco, New York and went to the mountains. Anyway, so let's use this as an example. Let's just say it's a million dollar house. So let's say you fly out to Aspen to look at this million dollar house and you love it. It's the first house you looked at uh, and you're like, I, I think this is it. But you can't do that, right? You got to look around. So why don't we do this? Why don't I'm going to give the seller of this house a, a contract, an option. I want the option to purchase this house for a million dollars in the next 30 days. And I'm going to pay the seller 10 grand for them to kind of sit on it, to take it off the market. What did I just do? That's a call option. It's a contract, right? It had a date, 30 days, and a price, right? 10 grand for the contract and the price of the house, a million. Okay, now check out what the two scenarios are. In that 30 days, Jesus, Ganesh, uh, Muhammad, and Buddha come all come back to life and they move in next door. <laughs> and, and they're like, you know, it, it the, the 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 cost of this house, the value of the home goes up to a hundred million dollars because next door is enlightenment. Guess what? I have an options contract that says so that piece of paper that was you know ten grand, that options contract is priceless in this case, obviously. I'm being facetious, but that's you're like, I got this place for a million, right? Now let's talk about the bad. During the next 30 days, as you're driving around Aspen and hanging out looking at homes, the governor of Colorado says that they're building a new prison next door. The price of this home goes to 50 grand. Whew. What are you out? 10 grand, right? I don't want it anymore. I'm, I'm not going to exercise the contract to buy the home for a million. Uh, I'm just, you can have the 10 grand. Bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a call option. So tomorrow or whenever at a cocktail party, you can be like, I know what call options are. That's it, right? When you buy, right, buyers have rights. I want to buy this house. I have the right to buy it at a million dollars. What do sellers have? Sellers have obligations. The seller of the house at the 30-day point was obligated to give me the house at a million bucks and the keys. So that's kind of it for call options. That's it. How about puts? A put option, so there's calls and there's puts. This has always fascinated me. The three largest assets that Americans own are what? A home, a car, and some sort of investment portfolio, either a trading account, a 401k, an IRA. But guess what? In America, two out of those threes are, are, are insured, or I mean, even required to be insured, right? I know my car and my mortgage demands, <laughs> the state demands it too, right? But people don't protect their portfolios. So put options are if you think something's going to go down. Usually call options, you're bullish, meaning, hey, I'm buying a call option because I think that that's a steal, that million dollar house, and I think it's going to go up. Oh, crap, it went down. I'm out. Put options are the opposite of a call option. Call options are usually bullish. Buying a put on something is bearish. Okay? There's options in, it was more than two minutes. That's my fault. That's it, folks. If you followed that example, those two examples, welcome aboard. You're, you're a piece of clay and I can mold you from there. Now, <laughs> it, it's... News flash: stocks can go to zero, folks, right? Options technically can't. You can lose that value, right? In the Aspen example, the most we could, the house went to zero. Our options contract for 10 grand <laughs> went to zero, kind of. Um, 
but options can. Now, before we get into this and talk about how great everything is and making money, folks, you lose in trading. Period. If you ever get, if you don't become a member, great or not great, but learn this. Next, whatever of these you go to, if the lady or the dude only talks about their winning trades and how awesome they are, run. They're a liar. A fool and their money are soon parted. Losing, you ready for this? Professional traders, I'm not going to ask the question because it's funny the answers I get. I'm going to tell you. Professional traders that I've known, New York, Chicago, London, on average want to win 60% of the time. Sometimes when I ask the percentage for you to guess, people are like 100, 90. What? I'm like, some people say 50. I'm like, if it's less than 50, you're lo whatever. People actually put 100. I'm like, it's physically impossible, folks. Nobody has 100% winning trades. Actually, I'm wrong. Everybody remember Lenny Dykstra? I grew up watching Lenny Dykstra. He was a Philadelphia Philly. The rest of his life didn't turn out so well, but he did. He ran like an option service on the street.com for Jim Cramer. Never have, I've never had a losing option straight. You know why? Because he kept rolling the contracts. His losing trades, he never closed. Anyway, we do lose some battles, guys. The objective is to win the war. Losing trades happen. You can lose money, period. All right? So, there, I couldn't stand this guy, but he had a good saying about the fog of war or the fog of trading. Donald Rumsfeld said in war, I say in trading, there are known knowns, meaning there are things we know, we know. Then he said there are known unknowns. There are things uh, we know that we don't know. And then he finally said there are unknown unknowns, meaning there are things we don't know that we don't know. Let me give you a perfect example. Two, three, no, four weeks ago, whenever. So the week of Amazon earnings, what happened? We have a separate service called Solo Amazon. I put on a, uh, a bearish trade to, because Amazon usually during the week of earnings is in a quiet period. It usually trades sideways into earnings and then usually explodes or implodes. What happened? Literally after I pressed enter and got filled on my bearish Amazon trade. Anybody know what happened to Amazon that week of earnings? Right here, Wiz puts on a bearish trade, which means I think it's going to at least stay level. It ripped all the way up into earnings. Rip your face off rally. I got pounded on that trade. Why? A rumor of a stock split. I hear that they're going to announce that they're splitting their stock on the earnings call. I've been trading Amazon since Jeff Bezos was a baby. He has always said he'd never split his stock. I'm like, uh, guess what happened? On the earnings call, no stock split. And that happened. So, you know what I did? I laughed. Wait, you laughed that you lost five grand or whatever it was? Yeah, I did. You have to. Folks, this happens. This is a market. I know for a fact, based on my mastermind group, that uh, that was leaked, not from the company. It was leaked. You all have seen the movie Wall Street, right? Blue Horseshoe loves Anacod Steel. Somebody leaked this to put another firm who was massively short Amazon, maybe out of business or at least to damage them. We're going to talk about what you have to start watching here in a little bit, but Wall Street, man, it is combat. Rumor, Wiz lost money, and then it, of course, imploded. So that sucked. That was a losing trade. You will see my good and my bad. But again, if you only go to these things and you're seeing good, run because they're lying. So I base all of what you're going to learn here at Top Gun Options on a building block approach. For me, I stole it from the United States Navy. I'm borrowing it, right? The training methodology that can take somebody who's never even seen an airplane before and in a short amount of time turn them into a steely eyed aviator flying off the pointy end of an aircraft carrier. Right. I, it, when I went to Pensacola, uh, there was a dude in my flight school class who had 6000 hours corporate, like in a Learjet. He, he just wanted to, you know, 
go fly fighter jets. And there was another guy in my class who lived in Montana. His first flight on an airplane was to Pensacola for flight training. I mean, just kind of a backwood type of guy. The dude with 6,000 hours almost failed out of flight training and the guy, uh, and he ended up getting helicopters, which was pretty funny. And then the guy who had really never flown before got jets. My point being this, the full throttle training is designed, what's the call, what's the put, all the way up to flying off the pointy end of an options carrier, okay? So this is what it's gonna look like eventually when we do the full throttle training a month or two from now after you become uh, a member. So it's a building block approach here at Topkin Options. Here's the, here are my intelligence sources, my trading methodology, calls, puts, this, this, this. So it's a building block approach. I'm not gonna airdrop you in the middle of Afghanistan with a rifle and say, good luck. That's how you fail. Okay, so how to trade options. How do we trade options? I know what a call is, Wiz. I know what a put is. First thing, don't. What do you mean? Folks, if you don't know what you're doing, I, I mean, no offense to anybody uh, who, who are the crypto Scientologists, but when my Facebook feed is full of, hey, how do I, what's doggy coin? Uh, how do I, yeesh, people get, destroyed if you don't know what you're doing. This is not rocket surgery, folks. Trading options is fun, it's awesome, but again, life's tough, it's even tougher if you're stupid. So that's why you're here to go through full throttle training. You have absolutely got to paper trade. Almost every brokerage on the face of the planet has a paper trading platform. At E-Trade, I use E-Trade, you can go to etrade.com, slash top gun let me post that on the screen real quick at etrade they will give you uh etrade.com slash top gun they will give you quote unquote a hundred thousand dollars in monopoly money so you get a trading platform literally that has a hundred thousand dollars in it so you can learn ladies and gentlemen i didn't go to pensacola read a book on aviation and run out to the airplane I would have gotten killed. Where do we go? We go to the simulator building. We spend a ton of time in the simulator. Engine fire, start emergencies, landing aboard the ship, out of control flight, going through your procedures. So when you sit in the jet for the first time, you're really more up to speed than if you just ran out there. So the paper trading is the simulator you need to be flying before you ever put any real capital at risk, okay? And then with the eight full throttle sessions, you're going to learn exactly what to do. Demo do, I'll demonstrate a tactic, a full call spread or whatever it is, and then I'll do in a live trade brief. That's why the full throttle training is at nights. Night, market's closed, let's just sit here and relax and talk stuff. The next day in a live trade brief, all right, we talked about this tactic last night, now let's apply it. That's how we did it in the military, folks. Demo do. I'll demonstrate, and then we'll do. Okay? So, I write this down. This is a good, uh, I'm an acronym guy. As an aviator, as a trader, we use a lot of acronyms because sometimes you're on STEM power only, man. In the, in the fog of war, breathe in, breathe out. It's the only thing working. I call it FMT. How do we trade options? We have to find what we want to trade. What name, what stock, ETF, or index. How do we find it? With our seven step trade plan. Over there in the uh, handout section, folks, is the trade plan. There's the full trade plan in there, which is like 12 pages, and then there's a one pager. So go over to the handouts on your little control panel over there, and you should be able to download the one page trade plan. It should be like printed out for the next full throttle sessions uh, the, this during this free week. Have your trade plan out, and we're gonna run through it, okay? Something to be said about writing down your trades, okay? Why? Picking up a pen, engaging brain, writing this stuff down is a hell of a lot more effective than typing in an Excel sheet or a Word document or not doing it at all. I love bumping into people who are like, oh, I'm a trader and uh, okay, I'm in this and uh, it's up this much. I'm like, oh, great, how much can you lose? What? I just told you it's up this much. I'm like, I didn't ask you that. How much, what is your max potential loss in that trade? When are you ejecting for minimum loss? When it, what are your profit targets? What's your SOP, standard operating procedure? 
and usually I get a blank stare. You have absolutely got to be trading with a trade plan. I love going to some of these other financial seminars. I usually log in early to watch the guy or the lady in front of me or after me. A, a, a couple people will say, oh, yeah, you definitely need to trade with a plan. Don't ever – and then they never give you one. I've actually been in there and gone, where's yours? And they never answer that question. You got mine. From the skies of Iraq to Chicago Board of Trade, the seven-step trade plan is fantastic. M, find, then you manage. You have got to manage risk in your portfolio. I'm telling you, man, I do. I see people, all they tell me is how much they're up in a trade. And when I ask how much can they lose, uh, you have got. You ready for this blinding piece of Monday Night Brilliance? You can't make money if you're losing money. Let that one sink in. So FMT, find, manage, and then we trade, man. We execute the trade, and then we manage it. Okay? Now, in our four briefs this week, you kind of should feel like this. We call it drinking from a fire hose, right? I remember going to Pensacola. I got my books. I stacked my books. And they were as high as me. Aerodynamics, meteorology, engines, you name it. Uh, it felt like I was drinking out of a fire hose. You should feel like this, and that's okay. Even if you don't become a member, if you don't feel like this somewhere else, they're doing it wrong. Okay? But that will slow to a trickle, and you're going to be a master. All right, real quick. Here's our methodology. Here's how I think about business. I, I did years of business consulting on the side, helping companies out. Uh, keynote speaker, wrote a couple books. Um, oh, I forgot about that. I was going to do some book stuff. Let me write that down. Um, but here's our methodology. This translates from trading to business as well. It's called S-O-T. Strategic, operational, and then tactical. What do I mean by this? The average retail trader, the hundreds of folks in this room, most of you are what? Very tactical. You don't even know what you're doing for lunch tomorrow, let alone what you should be investing in a month, six months, a year, two years out into the future. Very, very tactical trading. You wake up, put your bunny slippers on, sip your coffee, watch CNBC, see some dude who's being paid or is long something. Just talk. Hey, he's got a good looking suit, nice watch. All right, I'm going to buy whatever that guy just said. And you end up losing money. It, no, very tactical trading. Not here at Top Gun Options. We do SOT in every brief. Strategic. 10 to 15 minute, depending on what's going on in the world, brief. I'm going to treat you like you're an admiral or a general. You're going to sit there with your cigar in your mouth, with your boots up on the desk, and this young snot-nosed lieutenant is going to brief you on what's going on. You have got to know what's going on around the globe, economically, politically, militarily, economically. Everybody remember where you were in, what was it, 2013? I don't even remember. Remember the Greek debt crisis? You were probably sitting there one day, and uh, why is my 401k a 201k? Because the debt cre defaulting on their debt. and you, There was massive. How about the Brexit? Our markets were imploding on the Brexit stuff. People were like, oh, my God, why is, my, why is the market imploding? Was it like yeah, the Brexit stuff? The what? It's very tactical trading. How about politically? How about militarily what's going on around the world? Vladimir Putin invades eastern Ukra Crimea first, then Ukraine shoots down an airliner. How about war in the Middle East? How about, uh, thank God, President Trump, well, we were energy dependent. Now we're back to importing oil. That makes sense. Um, but folks, how about Taiwan? I absolutely am a thousand percent convinced in the next 3.5 years, China will take back Taiwan, period. Russia will take most of Ukraine. North Korea will launch ICBMs and Israel will attack Iran. How do you think the market is going to, how do you think, the, I think all of that happens, let alone one of them. So anyway, you got to know what's going on, folks. It's called SA, situational awareness. Then in the briefs, we're going to go one layer deeper. I call it the operational level. What's going on here domestically, economically, politically, hopefully not militarily? Domestically, folks, how are earnings looking? What's Jerome Powell lying about lately with Janet Yellen and Joe Biden? Um, 
I talk about politics, folks. I used to love when the Republican Obama and the Republicans, man, remember the government shutdowns? We printed money with those. The volatility index, the VIX, would skyrocket that the government was going to shut down. We'd get bullish on volatility. Then before John Boehner would come with his quivering lip crying to the microphone announcing that the government was back open, we'd already be out and getting bearish on volatility. I loved that type of stuff. You have got to know what's going on politically. Six trillion dollars in new spending. Where's that coming from? Well, it's actually going to come from all of us. How are you feeling about that? So after we brief operationally what's going on, then and only then can we get tactical and start trading. It cracks me up when people um, you know, who are new come to these briefs and in like the first 15 minutes, they're like, where are the trades? I don't want to hear all this stuff. I'm like, that's the people I throw out of the room, actually. I just kind of click and dismiss them. They don't get it and they they don't we I actually get rid of members, folks. I'll show you that in a couple seconds here. Um, but we uh, trade. That's when you trade, when you have situational awareness. Now you can press the mouse click and squeeze the trigger on stuff. OK. How about right now? Inflation. Yeah, the Democrats and the Fed chief and, and Janet Yellen, the Treasury secretary, keep saying it's transitory. You're going to listen to people who drive in motorcades, have security, don't go shopping, and live in the Beltway. If you're a regular human American, you know the price of everything is through the roof. Inflation is here. It's on fire. The Fed, who has zero credibility at this point, we're really playing musical chairs. The assets that, that the Fed has bought, I know at the height of the, uh, at the COVID crash, the Fed was buying stocks, the New York Fed. It's in my book. You can read about it. Um, the Federal Reserve, never in my 30 years, 31 years or whatever it is of trading, have I seen a Federal Reserve chairman on 60 Minutes. Not once, but twice in the past year. His first interview, he said, well, I just make money. I make it digitally. You know, I just kind of hit enter and money appears. And sometimes we print it and we send it to the Federal Reserve banks. Hey, hey, Jay, Jerome. I actually got a pretty big tax bill this year. Why don't you hit enter for Uncle Wiz? Zero credibility out of the Fed. They've lost all control, and we are playing musical chairs. When, not if, they raise interest rates, market will implode, period. This safety net that under that's underneath the market will melt away, I guarantee you. I love it. We're going to print money as it goes down. It's not going to be good for the country, and it's not going to be good for you if you're not a member here. Joe Biden, zero credibility. Uh, name the crisis, man. Or, or, well, the border's not in crisis. Oh, by the way, uh, you know what? <laughs> I have buddies in Arizona who were thrown out of their military housing. They got back from the field. They were out in the field for like two, three weeks doing maneuvers. They got back and said, you have to get your stuff out of your housing. Illegal immigrants. Uh, so we'll take them from the border and we're just going to throw them in. The, we have 60,000 homeless veterans, folks, that we don't even care for. But anyway, uh, pipeline hack. The East Coast of the United States, gas lines, hack. The response, uh, it's a private company. So we, you know, we're, what? Folks, we're under attack. Russia's attacking us. China's attacking us. This is different. It's fifth generation warfare, folks. War in the Middle East. Taxes are coming. How about we just Open the country in Jan the good old days. You ready for this? January of 2020. Market record highs. Unemployment record lows. Trump had just beat the Chinese into submission with a phase one trade deal. We were hitting on all cylinders. China virus. But somehow to get out of it, we need six trillion in new spending. We don't. It's going. Remember, folks. It, this is going to. And we. Um, it's so funny. Well, if if you don't make more than 200 grand or whatever it is, you you won't pay a penny more in taxes. It's a lie. Ladies and gentlemen, last time I checked, Jeff Bezos isn't a charity. When Amazon gets hammered with higher taxes, who's going to pay? Jeff Bezos is just going to go, I'll, I'll eat this. Or do you? You don't have to answer that question. So anyway, taxes are going to be huge. China, Russia, Iran, North Korea. So we're going to talk through all this stuff. Now, 
I'm going to rip through this very quickly because there's more important or just as important stuff I want to cover and then we'll wrap. Seven step trade plan. Download it, print it out. You need it. There it is. You ready? So we already talked about what's going on kind of strategically, a little bit operationally. Now we get tactical. We'll do this tomorrow morning in the primary live trade brief. I'm going to fire some real live trades in the morning. I got some good stuff to do. Anyway, step one, you have to determine what are you, man? What is your current strategic mindset? Are you bullish? Meaning you think things, stocks are going to go up, market's going to go up. Are you bearish? It's going to go down, Wiz. We're going to implode. You think we're just going to be volatile and whip around? Or are you neutral? We're just going to kind of chop sideways, right? And we can have variations, folks. I'm cautiously bullish. That's kind of been my strategic mindset for the past couple months. As we climb this unbelievable wall of worry i'm cautiously bullish what's cautiously mean i have one eye on the exit or one hand on the ejection handle i'm, I'm johnny on the spot man remember folks as an options trader we can go from being bullish to bearish or vice versa in the blink of an eye most of the large firms jp morgan goldman sachs family offices proprietary trading firms can't i remember all right, we're having a meeting at 1 p.m. in the boardroom to figure out what we're, I'm like, oh my God, we can execute immediately. A lot, if, if, if you're long 100,000 shares of Apple in your hedge fund and you want to dump it, you can't. First of all, if you tried to dump all that stuff, the stock would implode. It's like a super tanker doing 30 knots. When you put in a rudder correction, it takes like the state of Texas to turn. We can be nimble. We are fighter pilots. We are options traders. We can be nimble. Uh, okay, step two after you have your what your strategic mindset is, what's the target? That's just the stock, uh, the ETF, uh, or the index uh, that we trade. Remember this as we get going. Uh, do not trade an ETF if there's an index to trade. I'm not a tax attorney, I'm not your accountant, and I don't play one on TV. By the way, you might potentially get better tax treatment trading an index over an ETF. A lot of people trade the SPY, the Spider S&P 500. Don't do it again. Trade the SPX. First of all, an ETF settles in shares. If that confuses you, don't worry about it. I'll train you about it later. The indices settle in cash. So there's better tax treatment and it settles in cash. I've gotten emails from people who are like, dude, that tip right there, Paid for a couple of years of your uh, of being a TGO member. You're welcome. Step three, probably the most important part of a trade plan is writing down why you're in it. It's, I call this the the elevator pitch. Why are you committing capital to this trade? Why are you in it? You need to have three to five sentences, laser like. Right? Why do I call it the elevator pitch or cocktail party pitch? If I get in on the 30th floor with you in the elevator, by the time we get to the lobby, after you hit me with those three to five sentences of why you're committing your hard-earned money to this trade, I better look at you and go, oh my God, I'm an idiot if I don't do that trade. It's brilliant. Commit criteria. Why are you committing capital to this? I love pressuring people when they're, again, oh, I'm, I'm a trader too. I'm in this position. I'm like, why? Uh I, I like it. I think it's going to go up. Wrong, fail. Three to five sentences written down on your trade plan. Okay. Anytime, anytime your commit criteria change, two weeks into a trade, you're like, wait, man, this the stock's going down or whatever's going on. And you look back on your trade plan and go, all right, that sentence is good. Ooh, those two sentences are no longer valid. Eject. This is, look at the top of the slide, discipline, risk management, superior execution. How many of you are in a trade and you look at your, you, you probably don't even have commit, but you're like, ah, oh, it'll come back. It, it uh, you know, Apple doesn't hate me. Apple doesn't even know you exist. They steamroll over your house, folks. If your commit criteria change, eject out of the trade. Or at least look at your commit criteria and go, ooh, that's not valid anymore. But I am the pilot in command of my own portfolio. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm putting a cigar in my mouth and the scarf out the window, man. Even though the engine's on fire, I signed for the airplane. I'm gonna ride this one in, or I'm gonna get an air medal. 
there's a fine line between zero and hero, but at least you looked at your commit criteria and said, I'm going to stick with it. Okay. Step four, we have our strategic mindset. Target. Now we know why we're committing capital. What's the tactic we're going to choose? If you ever go to one of these briefs and the dude or the lady says, well, my favorite option is strategy, leave. They're an idiot. There's no such thing as an option of strategy. There's options, tactics. If you don't know the difference between a strategy and a tactic, or they don't, it's, it's a problem. Tactics support a strategy. A strategy is high level. It's 100,000 feet. Financial strategy, an option strategy might be, I got to manage risk with uh, saving for college, short-term income generation. I want to buy a boat in six months. Strategy, an iron condor, a bull put spread, whatever, those are tactics. Don't call it a strategy. How do you select the tactic? Well, I know what my strategic mindset is, step one, and I just rippled through my commit criteria. So I'm going to teach you. If you followed my little Aspen example, you know what a call option is and then the insurance, the put option. So step four is simply the trade, what our tactic is going to be. Step five, how are we going to employ it? All right, I picked the tactic with I'm going to do a bullish spread. Well, in the live trade briefs, I'm going to set up the trade, right? The tactical employment. I'm going to buy this leg. I'm going to sell this leg for this much money, blah, 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 this many contracts. So this is kind of the guts of the trade. We'll lay it out, right? And then you also take a look at what the max potential loss. This is, uh, actually placed this trade today. Uh, we placed an Amazon trade today, a bull put spread that's already up uh, 1800 bucks. So between now and Friday, this trade could potentially make 4500 bucks, but could also lose 10 5 10,500 bucks. That's my SOP, folks. Me, for my personal account, I don't want to risk more than $10,000 on any one trade. Now, if you're sitting there going, hey, that's a lot of money, I did 15 contracts. Maybe you do five. Maybe you're uber wealthy and you want to do 100. I can't tell you what to do. I won't tell you what to do. You're getting the eavesdrop on what I'm doing, right? So this bull put spread out to Friday could potentially make 4,500 bucks. Like I said, it's already up 1,800 bucks. So step five, tactical employment. Step six, I never dropped a bomb in anger or, or you know, and, and closed my eyes and said, oh, I hope that hits bad guys. We need mid-course guidance, man, right? Same thing with the trade. What are we going to do if something happens? We ask what if, both good and bad. Hey, what if this thing goes up? What if this thing goes down? So we contingency plan, right? Remember, uh, and I'm going to teach. I'm going to show you my SOP, standard operating procedure. But you can you can either trade like I trade or come up with your own. <clears throat> What's your profit target? What is your minimum loss allowed in that trade? And stick to it. You see that flight manual? That's the F-18 flight manual. This section right here, section five, emergency procedures. We I was going to say like to say, we don't like to say, we say that this is written in blood. Why? I think when the F-18 came off the St. Louis flight line, the, that emergency procedure section was probably, I don't know, a couple pages, right? The engineers came up with, well, these are some emergencies we could think of. Now it's up to about 100 in there. Why? People do stupid things. Things break, this, that, and the other thing. So we say that an SOP is written in blood. That's why I'm going to kind of give you mine so something to deviate from, right? Now, the first page of every flight manual in the United States Navy and Marine Corps says something like this. Nothing in this manual, this SOP, takes the place of good head work and judgment of the pilot in command, meaning you can deviate from these procedures and if you screw up, we're going to kill you. If you succeed, we'll give you a medal. Hero, zero. Okay, so you are the pilot in command of your portfolio, not me. And step seven, the final step, I call, call it the Colin Powell step. Why? Because when George Bush the first went to General Powell and said, need you to get uh, Iraq out of Kuwait. Okay, good. Before he left the room, General Powell said, hold on, Mr. President. When are we leaving? What is our exit strategy? What's our plan? 
when do we declare success? It made sense, right? Because remember, the highway of death, I flew over Basra, guess what? Everybody who were stupid was saying what? Oh, we have them, let's just go to Baghdad. No, not at that time, because we had an Arab coalition, man. It was essentially the world versus Saddam. If we had started doing what some on the left in this country wanted to do, no, nah, let's go all the way, it would have destroyed. So we had our exit plan before any troops even got on an airplane to go over there. So we do the same thing in our trade planning. When you hit your max acceptable loss or your profit target, get out. Pigs get slaughtered. Nobody's gone broke taking a profit. Okay? All right, good. Um, that's the discipline, folks. Trade plan, trade plan, trade plan. I still write my stuff out, even though this is it's like breathing to me. You absolutely should write it out. All right. Now to some fun stuff, and we got about five minutes. Hour and 15 was exactly what I wanted to do. You have got to watch Billions, period. It's on Showtime. Binge watch it. You want to know what's going on or how Wall Street operates? You watch Billions, period. I've watched Billions, and I'm like, I lived this. It is absolutely pretty damn accurate when that amazon thing happened stock split uh, and i heard that it was that, that i'm not i'm not going to oversell it you have to watch billions it's required this isn't a request it's an order all right so all right now this is you know i've added this to the end of my welcome aboard brief um for a for a reason okay um yeah i think they're they're uh they're shooting their new season, but you got to, you, you got time. So I'm going to give you some other required reading. This is good stuff. Write these down or take a picture of this when I get done. When Genius Failed, The Rise and Fall of Long-Term uh, Capital Management. This gives you a behind-the-scenes look kind of at a, at a trading firm when everything's going to hell. I mean, this almost destroyed the United States uh, stock market. That's a good one. Liar's Poker. Required reading. Michael Lewis, uh, he started. He, he was a bond trader at, at Salmon Smith Barney or whatever. This was the first book I read when I moved to Chicago, or I did move to Chicago. I was commuting to Chicago. We were still living in Fort Worth, and the owner of the firm gave me this book. He's like, "Read this in the next two days." I'm like, "Okay." It was awesome. Also gives you a good. Uh, you know, behind the scenes, look at Wall Street. And finally, this is a, a kind of a good one. I liked the myth of the rational market. So take a picture of the screen because these are all pretty good reads. The first thing I would do is billions, though. That That's if you're not a reader, you watch billions. OK, now um, this might seem a little off, but this should also be required reading. Ninety percent, ladies and gentlemen, of trading is right here. I love these these other mark. I see marketing stuff. My seven secrets to this or the that or my proprietary trading whatever and the magical indicators. It's all bullshit. The most important trading tool that you have is the six, seven, eight, whatever inches of gray matter between the ears, folks. Period. The E Trade brokerage platform. The tools that exist today were better than anything we had in our Chicago firm, folks. You, every brokerage platform that I know of is has pretty high-speed tools. So you see anybody talking about their proprietary this, it's a load of crap. Anyway, it's mental. You have got to read The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle. Tolle. A New Earth. And I'm going to throw in the four agreements. Take a screenshot of this page. The four agreements is a quick read. Why? Folks, when other people are panicking or the stock market's imploding, I am at absolute peace. If you're not centered, if you don't have a good grounding, you're going to be miserable. And you're going to be an awful trader. Hit a couple low points in the like four or five years ago. Uh, you ready for this? Tough, tough fighter pilot guy. I, I actually have my Lulu pants on. I found meditation and I found hot yoga. 
<laughs> if five year ago me could, would see me now, I'd, I'd kick my own ass. I mean, like, what, what are you do, downward dogging and meditate? Yes, saved my life and made me an absolute better trader. I'm kicking, well, I'll be present, namaste. I was going to say I'm kicking myself that I didn't know this scores of years ago. It has made me a better trader. Well, how about this? It's made me a better man, father, uh, you know, everything. It will make you a better trader, I guarantee you, especially when the market's going crazy. Please. Oh, this is a good one, too. I forgot about this one. Breaking the habit of being yourself. This is Dr. Joe Dispenza. It's sitting over there on my couch. I reread it. And there's I re-highlight stuff. Breaking the habit of being yourself is insanely good. And again, Navy fighter pilot, knuckle dragger, options trader. You'd be surprised that I'm ending the brief tonight with this stuff. It's a must. This isn't a request. I'm telling you, this is an order, guys. I'm putting the ladder down. It might not help you at all. I'd be stunned. I start my day first thing in the morning with a meditation session, and I end the day with it, and it has changed my life. I work out at the gym, obviously, but I also do hot yoga. So, um, yeah, never in my life did I think I'd be doing uh, yoga. Um, seriously. And it's funny because some of my buddies on social media, like, my, you know, squadron mates, like, oh, man, you know, whatever. And then they'll send me a direct message like, hey, dude, how do I get into this? Or tell them, to, what are you doing and, and how do I do it? I'm like, oh, oh, yeah, nice. Anyway, so required thinking. Please grab a book, watch a YouTube video, something on meditation. If you, because I, I, I've seen people all the time like, I can't meditate. I can't sit still my mind races you just won if you sit there close your eyes in a quiet room and you recognize that your mind's racing you won there's no such thing as good or bad meditation if you can sit there and go man my mind's all over the place you can actually step outside of yourself and look at it and go i am pretty damn scattered and then as time progresses, you will learn to be able to accept and observe. Kind of like sitting in a movie theater. Instead of being in your own damn movie, grab the popcorn and watch and let those things go. I'm, I swear, uh, folks, it is, you know, we're always remember this. <clears throat> yeah, you can do it when walking, Goose, absolutely. Um, uh, Mick, I do uh, E-Trade. I'll give you the link in a second here. <clears throat> when I left the military, uh, and then I went to that trading firm in Chicago. I remember a bunch of occasions where somebody would burst into my office like, oh, my God, whiz, you know, and whatever they'd be freaking out about. And as soon as they got done, I'd go, did anybody die? And they're like, w -w what? No, the, the quotes are down from the Philex. We're, we're not getting right quotes from the exchange. So nobody died. No. Then calm down, man. Same thing in trading. I got my ass handed to me a couple of weeks ago in, in a large crypto position, and guess what happened? Nothing. The next week it recovered a little bit, but it's if you're that wrapped around the axle, you're going to be miserable, right? Always ask, did anyone die? I come from a profession where if you screwed up, your wife got a flag on the mantle. You're dead. So everything less than that is you know, <laughs> it's okay. Remember, folks, it can always be worse. Uh, you know, I told you about my buddies, and one of the reasons I started the foundation is because of the veteran suicide. I uh, Last count, I think I counted it the other day because I'm going out to San Diego for some stuff. 18. From flight school to when I left flying the Hornet, 18. Uh, 17 men and one woman, the one woman, the first female Navy fighter pilot, uh, Kara Holtgren, um, 18 people. Uh, uh, so it can always be worse, guys. If you have that type of mentality, you're going to be an excellent trader, excellent trader. Brian, I have only found that peace you speak of in Jesus Christ, reading my Bible. Amen. Good for you, Brian. God bless. Um, okay. So 
I went five minutes over, which means uh, everybody gets a free drink uh, when we do. Hey, we do live events too, guys. Uh, we're going to be doing an event over in San Antonio, September, I think, 10th and 11th. I'm going to be bringing the jet over there for the Warrior Health Foundation. Uh, you, write this down. I forgot to brief this. It, it, you, you'll, you guys will know. In November, was it November 19th? November 19th, we rented the IMAX in Fort Lauderdale for the premiere of Maverick. Uh, I think we have 150 slots. Everybody's got to be wearing a flight suit. I got but one of one of our TGO members is uh, AJ Buckley. No relation. Great last name. AJ Buckley from CBS SEAL Team. I think he's bringing it. If you like to if anybody watch the CBS SEAL Team, he's my buddy. Uh, so we're going to so put that on your calendar, man. November, I think it's 19th. World premiere of Maverick down here in Fort Lauderdale. We're going to have a uh, a. a a great time. Uh, Charles, is there a link for tomorrow? It's the same link for all of these events. Okay. Let me get you the, uh, the E-Trade. Uh, somebody asked about the brokerage account. It is E-Trade.com slash Top Gun. So guys, it, it's, there's the link. If you want to open an E-Trade account and get some good discounted rates. Um, <laughs> John, I was a uh, I was a VT22 guy. And I was Kingsville. Yep. Deborah, yeah, Matt, read the book of John in the Bible. You will definitely connect even more with God. Thanks for all you do. I appreciate that, Deborah. Thank you. <clears throat> oh, awesome. Yeah, are you down in Kingsville? Uh, I love Kingsville, man. Um, glad to hear you're coming to San Diego. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm like flying in and out of San Diego, but. I'm actually heading down to Rosarita Beach in uh, in Mexico. Oh yeah, Maker. Yeah, no kidding. The T2 spin. I forgot about that. My God, man. It's sad. It's sad. But uh, you know, I'm going to do all I can to help uh, veterans that who are struggling uh, right now. So the Top Gun Fighter Foundation. All right. Good. Oh, hey, real quick. Um, it, you know, it, it, hopefully you got something out of tonight. Now we're done. How do you know when a date with a fighter pilot's half over with? It's that point in the date where he looks lovingly at you and says, I'm done talking about me. Why don't you talk about me? So I'm done talking about me. The next three briefs are all trading and all good stuff. So, But if you want to check out um, our Facebook page, we have over like 200 reviews on here, 4.8 out of 5. Um so, and then over here on Trust Pilot, uh, 50 reviews, 4.7. This guy, this this bad review was a dude that I threw out who was just a jerk in the chat box, couldn't stand my politics, and just, he was awful. And under our terms of service, I'm like, if you're disruptive and whatever, we can throw you out. So he went on here and wrote a shitty review. So uh, I'll take the 98%, but this guy was, he was a jerk. Nobody liked him. So I do get rid of people, man. If if it's not a fit, it, this is, we're a squadron, man. If you don't fit in, in a squadron, you don't hang around, man. They get rid of you. So, <clears throat> all right, good. Oh, thank you guys. Awesome. Uh, yeah, good. Uh, yeah, just go to the, uh, or I'll give you this. I think this, yeah, go, you can go read the reviews and hang out. All right, guys. So tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. Let's get going uh, because you need to be well rested. If you're working tomorrow, don't worry about it because there's the replay page. Let me give you this link one more time. This replay that from right now will be up here in about an hour. I'm going to finish watching or the Capitals game done. Went to the Panthers game last night. Goose. That's the other benefit of Top Gun Options, man. Maybe go flying in a fighter jet. Maybe come to the Panthers game. Uh, we are we are tight-knit squadron, folks. So thank you, Maria. I appreciate it. Mark, absolutely. Time to take a drink from Niagara Falls. Good times. You got it, Jeff. Awesome. Yeah, Chris, exactly. Every legitimate business has at least one bad review. And it's funny because the guy lost the credit card when he charged back with his credit card company uh, and lost with them. They they usually side with their, their card holder, not the merchant. And even their, their his credit card company was like, no, dude, it says it right here. Anyway, but yeah, I do have a bad review. One out of 11 years is, is pretty damn good. I'm pretty happy uh, with that. So, all right, folks, good stuff. Had a good time tonight. Again, welcome aboard. That's me. That's Top Gun Options. Our methodology, a little bit of a, 
mine stuff, take it or leave it, it's working for me. Uh, so uh, I'm just trying to help you out and put the ladder down, okay? So I'll see many of you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, for the primary live trade brief. So sweet. Have a great rest of your night. Happy hunting. Make sure you hedge and God bless. Namaste. And I will see you tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Fights on. We'll see you tomorrow.